close your eyes. Focus on your breath. Watch your breath all the way in. Watch it all the way out. See if you can get your mind to quiet down with the breath. Be right here. You don't have to go anywhere else. You stay right here. The mind gains a foundation, a good solid place where it can stay, a good solid basis for its happiness. The mind needs this kind of basis because otherwise, if its happiness depends on things outside, well, we see what happens to things outside. One little mistake in Arizona and its power is out all over for seven million people. A few planes drive into some buildings and we have, what, ten years now of war. All kinds of things can happen in this world. If your happiness depends on the things in the world, it's going to be based on something that's really unstable and unsure. And when it's based on things that are unstable and unsure, what do you do? A lot of people run around trying to protect what they've got. And they end up doing all kinds of unskillful things, which means they end up losing those things eventually, because we all have to lose them anyhow. Death comes to everybody. Separation comes to everybody. But on top of that, they've also created a lot of bad karma for themselves. So they've thrown away their real treasures, their inner treasures of their virtue, their generosity, and their, their kindness. They throw them away for what? For things that are going to just slip through their fingers. So we have to have a good foundation inside where we can base our happiness. That means when things change outside, the mind isn't disturbed, the mind isn't upset, the mind doesn't feel threatened. And when you don't feel threatened, why would you want to do anything harmful? Why would you want to do anything unskillful? So it's this way. When we train the mind like this, it's a gift both to ourselves and other people, because we're not going to go around harming them in hopes of getting some little happiness for ourselves. And at the same time, we make sure that our own record is clear. No unskillful words, no unskillful deeds, no unskillful thoughts. And as I said, everybody has to go. I mean, death is normal. We don't like to think about it, but it's, it's normal. It happens to everybody. The question is whether you die with goodness or whether you die with something that's not so good. If you die with goodness, there's no reason to be, to be sorry, because that goodness paves your way to a good lifetime the next time around. If you die with unskillful behavior, well, that unskillful behavior is going to pull you down. So you have to remember that what's really valuable in life is not so much life itself, it's the goodness that you can do in life. Learn how to protect that. That's your main possession. That's your most important possession. And to protect that, the mind needs to have a good, solid foundation inside. That's why we meditate. That's why we train the mind to stay right here. First we stay with the breath, and then we get the mind able to stand on its own, where it doesn't have to depend on anything at all. It develops inner strength, the strength of conviction, strength of its persistence, strength of its concentration, its mindfulness, its discernment. These are the things that enable the mind to stand on its own, so it doesn't have to lean on other things and then come falling down when those things fall over as well. You want to make sure the mind stands up straight on its own power. That way it's secure. There's a story in the canon where King Vasanity comes to see the Buddha. Now you know King Vasanity lived with an army. He, he was the sort of person who had had a huge army to protect himself, and he find, protect himself. And he finally realized one day, he came to the Buddha and said, you know, I realize that even with a huge army, if you engage in unskillful thoughts, unskillful words, unskillful behavior, you're unprotected. You're leaving yourself wide open for suffering. But if you, even if you don't have an army, but if your behavior is good, okay, then you are protected. You're protected from yourself. You're protected from your own bad karma. And when there's no bad karma, there's nothing that can touch you. As the Buddha said, it's like having a hand without a wound. You can pick up poison, and the poison doesn't seep into the hand. No problem. But if there's a wound on your hand, in other words, you've got bad karma, then the poison can seep in. So you want to protect your actions, you want to protect your thoughts, your words, and your deeds. Protect all your good qualities, because those are your most important possession. And when the time comes to go, that possession is going to go with you. As for the things of the world, they're not really yours to begin with anyhow, and you're going to have to leave them someday. So make sure that you don't throw away your true possessions, your true treasures, for things that are not going to last. So this is how you protect yourself and how you protect others. by looking after your mind, by training your mind. So it doesn't need to depend on things outside in order to have a sense of happiness and well-being. That's the true protection that we all need. <laughs>